This is the Sligo Southern Hotel, and I may be staying in a room of a legend, a footballing legend. Everton legend Dixie Dean is the club's highest ever scorer. He's done things in the game that other Everton players could only dream of. After his incredible time at Everton, he spent a little bit of time at Sligo Rovers. And when he was playing for Sligo Rovers, he stayed in this hotel, which I am currently staying in as well. It is fantastic, and a huge, huge thank you to them for putting me up for a couple of nights here. It isn't a sponsor video but I will just let you know that they are letting me stay free of charge and I would recommend it to you it is an incredible place to stay in Sligo and it is right near the stadium that Dixie Dean would have once played at the Everton connection doesn't just stop with Dixie Dean um, with Sligo, but with Seamus Coleman as well. Famously, they bought him for just £60,000 from Sligo. There's obviously not a huge amount of money in the Irish game, so when a good young player does come through, they're usually an absolute bargain. 60k for Seamus Coleman to Everton and how good he was for a number of years. He's still there, of course, hasn't played as much in recent years, um, but I just remember having or seeing Seamus Coleman on the right and Leighton Baines on the left. It was some duo, wasn't it? Before I take you into the stadium, which is completely wide open, I actually need to show you something over here first. Oh, wow, just check this out. So this is obviously a training pitch for the community to use or maybe for the first team to train on. I'm not 100% sure, but there's something over here that I've seen. It looks very, very interesting. Someone who I was actually, uh, actually researching today, funnily enough. Here is... Sean Fallon. This looks like it's the Sean Fallon Centre, part of Sligo Rovers Football Club. And look, the main stadium is just over there. The weather is horrific, so I won't spend too long here. But this man is an absolute Celtic legend. He wasn't just a player for all these different teams and the Republic of Ireland national team, but he was also this Celtic assistant manager for a very long period of time as well. And I think he unveiled the Brother Walford statue, which is also a part of the surrounding area. Let me wipe the GoPro screen for you. Um, yeah, that is also a part of the area. There's so many Celtic legends that come from this part of Ireland. Obviously, there is a huge link between Celtic and Ireland for obvious reasons, none more so than the actual founder of the club, who was actually from County Sligo. I went to his um, village this morning to uh, check out the bust of Brother Walfrid, and I do believe that Sean Fallon helped to unveil the bust. Um, so yeah, two legends from this area who are very Celtic connected. And we also have two big names who are very Everton connected. So this kind of relatively small club, I say in inverted commas, especially in the grand scheme of football, they're not small in Irish terms, they're a very well run, very big successful team within Ireland, but in the world terms of football, um, they're obviously not massive, but they have produced people like Sean Fallon, and this area has obviously produced people like uh, like Brother Walfred and then Seamus Coleman, and it's also brought in huge names like Dixie Dean. There are so many grounds in Ireland, and Northern Ireland, I think out of the 12 um, premiership stadiums that I actually saw, three of them were called showgrounds. <laughs> so I think a quarter of the entire top tier of Northern Ireland have grounds called showgrounds. And I believe that that is due to the annual shows that are sort of held on at these places where it's like part of like their agricultural society. Um, obviously Ireland is huge agriculturally. Um, farming is a massive part of life here, um, especially in these more rural areas as well. So it all makes sense that um, that's a reason why these stadiums have these kinds of names. Volunteers have helped do up the ground in recent years and as you can see it's absolutely beautiful and there's a groundsman on here just now doing his thing but some of the seats look brilliant that old stand that I was just in over there as well as this one over here the seats look fantastic it looks like a really really big park as well. Oh, nice. Thank you very much, mate. What's your name? Yeah, I'm Ross. Oh, lovely to meet you, man. How's it going? You okay? I'm, I'm good. I'm just on holiday, but I see, I'm a Mullow fan. Oh, so we might right. Mullow fan. The next. That's right. You might be, if they beat um, Ballatown. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thought, while we're in the area, I'll just try oh, check it out. Yeah. Well, you might be coming back to see them play against oh, Mullow. How are you, mate? You okay? Not bad. Nice to meet you, man. How's it going? Mullow fan as well. 
Ah, oh, nice, nice. I was mad. I, I didn't expect to see. <laughs> you come all this way. Oh, mate, you got your mouth well shirt on. It's looking good. Do you give yourselves a chance in Europe then? Against them, yes. Yeah, you think maybe, so? Maybe not after. Why was it you played? Didn't you go out to a British team before? It was uh, an Israeli team that beat, beat Celtic a few years ago. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. They beat two Irish teams, then it was. Or maybe I'm thinking of Killy. Didn't Killy lose against was, a Welsh team or yeah, something? That's yeah. right, yeah, I remember, I remember. Nice. Well, well what do you think? They have quite a big club, actually, to be fair. What do you think of Sligo, anyway? It reminds me of Hamilton's ground. Sligo. You're a Sligo yeah. player? No, I'm a volunteer here. Oh, okay, lovely. What is it that you do here, then? Uh, well, kind of bits and bobs around the place with summer camps on. Ah, oh, lovely, so. lovely. I was just going to check out some of the history on here. It makes my job easier when there's just, like, stuff to see all yeah, around the outside. Well, they put that in last summer. Ah, brilliant. Yeah, so nice. What's the best part about working here then? Like, what what do I need to know about the club? Community spirit. Yeah, it really is a community club. Yeah, well, it's kind of quiet this week. Everyone's crossing England for the big games. So. Of course, yeah, yeah. You're playing in Europe, right? Yeah, that's right. No, I'm heading over tomorrow morning. Oh, are you really? Oh, mate, best of luck anyway. I was just going to say before I met Ronan there, um, come all this way to Sligo. I met a few Motherwell fans over there who might be playing Sligo in the next round of the Conference League. But look, here we go. Sligo Rovers, where it all began. 1904 as St. Mary's FC and then 1913. From what I can see online, it says that they were formed in 1928. So I don't know if these were like different clubs within Sligo at the time before like the official Sligo Rovers sort of came to be. But look, here we go, the showgrounds again. Like I was saying, so many places are called the showgrounds. This was the Sean Fallon bit I told you about earlier on with like the Astro next to the main stadium. And we are currently here. Yeah, we're literally there, just by these cool looking old gates. Rovers, grounds and development committees have overseen many changes to the showgrounds in the 70 years between these photographs. Mainly the enhancement of the main pitch, construction of the Tracy Avenue stand, installation of the all weather facility and the provision of a new car park. So let's see how different it was from then to then. Look at that. Wow, yeah, look how far it went out. I suppose stadiums back in those days were used for a lot of different things not just football so they had to have like running tracks cycling tracks things for obviously the agriculture like i told you about earlier but look you can even see like these houses here have that kind of shape to them and they even do here as well look at that how they sort of go round yeah look, as you can see here it says since sligo rovers was established in 1928 we saw around there there was like earlier pictures of teams i guess that would have been uh been like earlier editions of different Sligo clubs, I suppose. Um, but the peace program is funded by the UE, uh, EU peace program, managed by the special EU programs body. So they've obviously uh, come together to create this museum here, the Showgrounds Museum display. Sligo Rovers, colourful and diverse history. And look, here he is, the man himself, Dixie Dean. So, William Ralph Dean, better known as Dixie Dean, began his career with Tranmere Rovers before moving to Everton, the club he supported as a boy. There he became the most prolific goal scorer in English football history, best known for scoring a record 60 league goals in the 1927-28 season. He scored 11 goals during his time with Rovers, including five headers in a 7-1 home victory against Watford. Wow, record-breaking goal scorer, Everton legend. And any Everton fans, well, I've made quite a few Everton, fan, uh, Everton videos before, so I might still have a few Everton subscribers left. If there are any of you watching, you have to come to Sligo Rovers and check this place out because one of your greatest ever players, arguably the greatest ever, the man with a statue front and centre at Goodison Park, is a huge legend here as well. Now this is quite interesting, I do love maps. So any map always seems to grab me. Sligo Rovers United Nations, does this mean players who have played here and the countries they're from? Because if it does, look, they've had quite a few Europeans, Eastern Europeans, Estonians, Polish, a few, uh, a few from the Balkans here, Bosnia, of course, Portugal, Spain, France, a lot from the Netherlands, if that's what this is, if that is players, which I'm, I assume it would be. Quite a few Aussies have come across. A few Africans, look at that, from the south all the way to the north, and a few in the west. And then we have some from the Caribbean, from the tropical waters of the Caribbean Sea to 
the greyness of, <laughs> of sunny Sligo. And then we've had a few South Americans and a few North Americans as well, look at that. And look, there's just so much to see and just almost too much to tell you about all these boards. I could genuinely spend all day here. There's a Seamus Coleman one just behind me, which I'll take you through in a second. But let me just tell you about what they've actually won as a club. So they've won three league titles, their most recent one being in 2012. They've won five FAI Cups and two League of Ireland League Cups as well. They've even won everybody's favorite Irish slash Northern Irish competition, the Satanta Cup. They do have a bit of a European record, which I'll show you on screen right now, looking to see sort of some of the bigger teams that they've played. They were in the Intertoto Cup as well. Who doesn't love the Intertoto Cup? I've mentioned that a lot since I've been in Ireland, it seems. Probably the biggest team they've played, uh, maybe Club Bruges, Red Star as well. Um, Travana from Slovakia. But look, as you can see on the bottom there, they will be playing Bala Town in the Conference League in just, uh, maybe it's tomorrow from when I'm filming this. So by the time it goes up, that complete tie may have been played. The first leg probably will have already been played by the time this goes up. Um, maybe not the second game by then. But if they win that, they play Motherwell, which will be brilliant for um, Sligo to get a, a bigger Scottish team like Motherwell to come here. But look, here he is, Seamus Coleman, impressing in a pre-season friendly against Sligo Rovers while playing for local Killy Beggs. What a name that is. A Killy Beggs club, St. Catharines. Seamus Coleman joined Rovers in February 2006. He made his debut as a substitute in a 5-0 Cup semi-final replay defeat away to Derry City in October later that year. By 2008, Seamus was linked with a move to the UK and Everton finally signed him for just 60 grand. Look at that in 2009 with a few add-ons as well his stellar career subsequently developed captaining both club and country the manner he conducts himself both on and off the pitch makes him the consummate role model of a professional footballer in all Seamus Coleman made 62 appearances for Sligo in his three seasons with the club scoring just once uh, in a 3 0 win over Bray Wanderers in 2008 and there he is there look Seamus Coleman who is a bigger hero here at Sligo Rovers. Is it Dixie Dean who stayed for maybe 11 games who was probably a better player overall? Or is it Seamus Coleman who came through here and blossomed as a player here and later went on to sign for Everton? Sligo fans, who do you hold dearest to your heart? Dixie Dean or Seamus Coleman? Let me know in the comments. There's even more to see here. This is just unreal. Like I say, I could spend hours taking you through all the stuff in here, but look, the 1983 FAI Cup final winners. Oh, I actually held that trophy at uh, St. Patrick's, didn't I? Down in Dublin, maybe, what was that, a week or so ago now? Um, yeah, unbelievable, I actually held that exact trophy there. So this photo says 2013, so this must have been the year after they won the league, look, when they were holders. That is the league trophy there, that is the most recent one that they'd have won. Sligo fans, what will it take to bring another league back here? And look, here we go again. This is 2014, the picture was taken. Of course, they won the cup in 2013. And that is the FAI Cup again, the one that I held um, down in Dublin just recently. But look at it, absolutely pissing down here. Do you know what I've sort of found in Ireland? The rain isn't like as mental in Scotland, like it doesn't batter you like it does in Scotland. I'm sure it does at, at times, but it just seems more consistent and more just fine. It's like just constant, nothing too crazy, nothing too heavy, but just a real constant stream of just really soft rain. Whereas in Scotland, it will just batter you and then the sun will come out. That's what I sort of uh, realized a little bit here. But yeah, look at this. I'm sure you get some lovely views on a more clearer day, but look, there's like the church through there and a lovely little stadium. The uncovered section over there. Wouldn't want to be in there for an away day when, uh, when it was raining. Ah, oh, Christ, the weather's absolutely horrific. It makes it so much harder to film and be out and about. This is literally July. I, the summer this year has been awful. From start to finish in Scotland, well, it's not finished yet, but in Scotland and in Ireland so far, it's just been absolutely, can you even see me right now? The amount of rain that's on the GoPro. Ah, if it wasn't for the terrible weather, this would have been the perfect trip. It's been pretty good, actually, to be fair, in Ireland so far, but we need to go and warm up somewhere, come on. There's only one place we can go. Five twenty. Five twenty. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. 
So yeah, I'm not just making it up to suit the video, but Dixie Dean has genuinely stayed in this hotel from what I've been told um, by the owners of this place. So maybe he came and sat in this exact position that I'm in now at this table to eat a post-match meal after scoring one of his uh, 11 goals or maybe his five headers against, was it Waterford, I think? Or maybe he washed it down with a Guinness. Or perhaps he was a little bit more uh, health conscious than me.